What's up guys? We are back for another Star Wars Black Series review, taking a look at a figure that I have wanted in my collection for a very long time, and I'm really curious to see how Hasbro's done with this one. So we have got the long-awaited General Grievous up for review today. We've got him here in a bit of an oversized Black Series box just because he is a larger figure and because of that he is the official start of the deluxe line. So he gets a special designation this time around. So we've got him here in his box. You can see him there in the window. We've got some artwork down there in the corner. He is number D1 this time around and we've got that artwork on the back as well as a bit of a bio. So let's do it. Let's pull this guy out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our General Grievous figure. And this is one that, you know, I've wanted for a really long time. It's one that has definitely been kind of at the top of my wants list for figures that you just know are coming eventually. He just didn't come soon enough. And I'm not so sure he really lives up to my expectations, honestly. I think I've kind of overhyped this guy. He has some good, he definitely has some not so good, and he has some bad. Uh, it's not the worst figure by any means. I feel like they maybe had a miss here and there overall. But I still do think he looks pretty good, and we're going to kind of run through all of the normal stuff. We have to start by talking about this cape first so I can get it off of him, and then we can do articulation, just so it's easier to manipulate. So the, the cape in general, I think from a look perspective, I think very much works for General Grievous as a character. In this instance, I'm not so sure this cape really, really works all that well. And it mostly comes down to just, I mean, obviously, how it sits on him. It sits really funny. And this big front flap right here that crosses over him, it should not be that big. It should, it should be able to be tucked under his armor because you never really see it like this all the time, and a lot of times you just see it draped over his shoulders. So this is just odd to begin with. I do like the two-tone colors. I like the dark gray, and I like the red, and I love the fact that we have the spots for the lightsabers inside the cape. That alone is just fantastic. What I'm not so sure about is why it's not stitched at the bottom. I guess it's an inner cape, outer cape thing. It might just be something I've never noticed on him before, if it's supposed to be that way. It doesn't necessarily take anything away from it, but it also seems kind of odd, just based on the fact that I'm not sure it's supposed to be that way. Otherwise, I think it's okay, but it definitely doesn't really add to the figure. It makes him look really bulky at the top, and it just, this part right here, this is my one real gripe. It should have been able to have been tucked into this recessed area at his uh, at his neck. And it can't. It really can't. You can maybe force it in there a little bit, but the tolerance is, is just high. And it's also pretty thick, too. Not to mention the fact that when you get to this part, you've got two thick pieces of material draped over top of each other. So, you know, it kind of works, and you can get him posed decently with it. Maybe hide some of the bulkiness in how you pose him. But when he's standing straight up, I mean, it's just... It doesn't doesn't do all that for me. So we're gonna we're gonna pop it off, and we'll talk about how he moves around. It thankfully comes uh, you know comes off and goes back on very very easily. So you can really remove it just fine. As far as articulation goes, this guy is a mixed bag, and it all comes down to engineering for what he is. Now obviously this is not your standard Black Series figure by any means. This is a very different beast altogether, just because he is so wildly different in the fact that he is a droid. It's not like the Rio Durant figure where they just threw a couple extra arms on him. They had to really do something different because he has to, you know, detach and reattach those arms. So at the head, the neck moves up and down, and it then rotates a little bit as well. The head also moves up and down, and then bobbles side to side and rotates. There's a lot of movement up here at the neck and the head, so you've got a lot of, like, attitude up there, really. The arms go out. They do not rotate. Uh, they well, Let me preface this by saying that when the arms are together, they do not rotate. They kind of wiggle back and forth, but you're not going to move them all the way around. They hinge, and you can get them like about like that, about 90. You have to watch out for the actual hinges, though, because a lot of swiveling goes on in this area here. And if that one of those arms is swiveled while it's torn apart, basically, it will not allow you to hinge. And then from there, that's really it. There is no swiveling at the wrist. And, uh, yeah. So you can pop the arms apart. We're just going to pop them both apart right here. And we'll use one as an example. So one arm goes out, and then you can rotate that arm. And then you've also got a what would be a bicep swivel, sort of. The arms, uh, they hinge better when they're, they're loose. Not much, though. The forearm swivels, and that's what you have to watch out for. I, I initially thought my figure was messed up, and I realized that one of the arms swivels at the forearm was just stuck. So it wasn't allowing me to actually hinge. It was this arm. And then there's still nothing at the uh, there's still nothing at the wrist, but that forearm swivel kind of helps if you want to 
add a little flair to the to the grip of this figure. So he has, you know, he has articulation, but there is just there's things in the way here. There's stuff that is not present on any other figure that they had to throw in simply because of the fact that he has the combining arms. If they didn't have that, if they just left him to be one figure that only had the two arms and they didn't give him the forearm feature, I feel like we'd have a lot more momentum and just dynamic movement here. But a lot of that's kind of lost, especially when he's in the two arm pose. So what that leads me to believe is that the end result or the end goal for this figure was to be able to allow fans to have a forearmed General Grievous because he's definitely more versatile that way. Uh, he does have a bit of a waist twist, bobble back and forth a little bit, but he's in this, you know, kind of fake rib cage thing, so it doesn't really do a whole lot. There's nothing below that either. His legs go out that far. They kick forward, I mean, really far. That's, that's, that's way too far. <laughs> and then they go, they go back as well. Uh, there's, there's just a wiggle here, if, if what you could consider to be what they did for a thigh swivel. And then he's got uh, the double, double joint knee there, well, sort of. It's uh, about, it, it's basically a double joint knee as far as how, how far it goes. And then you've got the kind of the dog ankle kind of thing down here. And it's just a hinge up and down. And then you've got the ankle down here, which does swivel. And it does hinge a little bit, but it doesn't do too much. Frankly, I have balance issues with this figure when it comes to how he stands. And it just comes down to the fact that there's a lot of stuff going on down here. And he's really, really spindly. So you've got these really tiny ankles like the dog ankle kind of thing, because he's kind of like one of those sort of a digitigrade type of uh, character. And you can get him to stand just fine. It just might take you a minute or two longer than usual to get him to stand up straight. So he does have articulation, and he has quite a bit of it. It's just, at the end of the day, it's just very, very different and limiting in some ways, but also pretty freeing in, in others. It's just comes down to design on this guy. He is very different from any other figure we have ever gotten, even more different than the battle droid, despite the fact that that's very recent to us. This guy is very different from everything, so Hasbro kind of had to do what they could with the engineering to make him fit within this $30 price tag. Now, as far as the overall look and feel, I think for the most part, this figure's pretty solid. I do have a gripe in terms of his size, which we'll talk about when we do a bit of a size comparison to a standard six inch figure, but I think for the most part, he does look pretty good. I like his design. I like the fact that he's not he's not clean because he's certainly not supposed to be. You've got all of these little, uh, f you know, flecked paint pieces over here. So it shows that his legs have been hit and scarred in battle. He's got a bunch of dirt on the knee pads. He's got a bunch of dirt up on the breastplate there. He's not maybe as dirty as he could be, but it's, it's a Hasbro figure, so I'm not going to fault it too much. Of course, he is a deluxe figure, so maybe I should, but I think a lot of the deluxe stuff for this guy comes into his engineering. I do like the, uh, the back plates on him. I like the fact that everything's that bone color. I like that you can see some of the inner workings of the figure itself in the neck area, in the chest. Of course, I would have loved to have seen some organs, though, because that's, that's one of my favorite qualities of Grievous is that he's just kind of a bag of organs shoved inside of a droid frame. Overall, though, I do think he looks pretty good. I don't have too many gripes with his design. I think Hasbro did a good enough job with what they could do to make him this functional and, and still have the uh, the forearm option along with the two-arm option. And they made it so that these pegs that are in here, they kind of blend in with his overall design. They aren't too intrusive to make it kind of stand out. You can certainly see them, but they aren't uh, they aren't going to get in your way. And I don't think they're going to mess up your, your sight lines with this figure just because he's got these pegs that are sticking out of his arms. What I do think is a bit of a problem, though, like I said, is his size. He's not too undersized. I just think he's not exactly right. I do think he leans towards the smaller end of the spectrum here. And here he is with uh, with Obi-Wan. And you can see that Obi-Wan here is, uh, well, if I knock everybody over, Obi-Wan is, he comes up to about his shoulder. So they're pretty close, but it's only a head difference. And even when Grievous is shown as being like lurched over or hunched over, he's still really, really big. You know, it makes me think of that exact line when they first meet him in uh, episode three, where Anakin says, I thought he would be taller. And it's, it's just one of those things where I think he should be a little beefier, maybe a little thicker in terms of some of the parts here. And then I think he should be maybe a half inch taller. Now, the last thing to talk about with the figure, though, is, of course, the head sculpt. And I think this is pretty solid. I, I really don't have any complaints about the way his face looks or his head looks. I like all the line work in there. I like the fins that come off the sides of the head. You've got face printing on this guy, even though he's not, you know, a real person. We've got scarring there 
on the faceplate, you've got the lines that run down, you've got the, the little mouth lines at the bottom, and then of course you've got his nasty uh, kind of charred pink uh, flesh under there with those yellow eyes. So I do think he looks pretty good. I don't really have any complaints here. I'm pretty happy with the way his head sculpt looks. Of course, it does probably lean towards the small side of the spectrum just because he's he's a little undersized, I do think. But I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I don't have any I don't have any real gripes from the neck up with this guy. Now, as far as accessories go here, we have a decent amount. And of course, we have exactly what you think we would have for this particular figure, because honestly, if they didn't give us four lightsabers, this figure would have been an absolute disaster, despite the fact that it does already have issues. I mean, imagine a Grievous that didn't have four lightsabers. That would, that would just be insane. So we have got four lightsabers. Again, we've got two blue and we've got two green. And these lightsabers, I'm not entirely sure what the source is supposed to be for these, like where they come from. I don't know if it's been re-explained in the new canon where he gets his. So you've got two blue, and then you've got two green. And they fit decently enough into his hands. Uh, they're not they're not perfect by any means. Some of them fit better. The bigger ones fit better in his hands than the smaller ones. So you can see they're all unique. They all have uh, different grips, different handles, different designs. And in the old canon, there was a book that actually explained where these came from. They were from Jedi's Pablo Jill, Roran Karab, Eeth Koth, and Shakti. There's a new book in the new canon that's supposed to explain lightsaber stuff, but I don't know if it goes into detail for Grievous, and I haven't read it, so I'm not really sure. Uh, and you know, and then even before then, he was supposedly got one of his lightsabers from Sifo Diaz, but that was that was re rewritten at some point, so we don't know. I'm not really sure. I don't think any of these lightsabers have been used in this line before, and they aren't even lightsabers that I believe you see in the movie either, because in the movie, a lot of his sabers are stunt sabers that are used for Anakin and Obi-Wan as well. So again, here's all four. You've got two blue, two green, so they match with the film in terms of what he's supposed to have. I just don't know for sure what the what the source is for this or if Hasbro just got to have fun with saber design. And then the other accessory he has is the blaster rifle that you see him use in Revenge of the Sith. So his... Uh, Whatever number it is, Annihilator Blaster. I can't remember what it's called, but it's it's the name is the Annihilator, the one that Obi-Wan ultimately uses to kill him. Spoiler alert, I suppose. So overall, I do still like this figure with a few caveats. He's certainly not what I had hoped he would have been. And I think that's where my main frustration comes in, is that I really hoped that they could have nailed this figure. And they did a decent job, but with other figures recently, you know that they probably could have done better. I do think he's slightly undersized, the cape is kind of a mess, and then he does have some weird articulation, which aren't necessarily problems in so much as design limitations because of what they had to do to make those arms work. So at the end of the day, I would have rather have had four arms that can be used individually and limited two arm articulation than to only have two arms because that's just not grievous to me. So they gave us his defining characteristic and I can appreciate that. I do like the fact that we got the four unique lightsabers. They very much help complete his look. And in general, he's still a fun figure. I just don't think he lived up to my expectations. And again, that could have been just because I really overhyped this figure for a very long time because I have really been looking forward to it. So that's going to do it for this look at the Star Wars Black Series General Grievous figure. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.